begin with glorious day. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could care?
and good morning all the precious children of God. We're glad you're here, we're glad you're uh, through the camera, wherever you are, and we are blessed to have Pearl leading us this morning, and she will start us with the call to worship. Good morning. Celebrate our God from the plains to the mountains. Celebrate our God from the water and hills. Sing to our God, fill, fill the, the air, air with song, song to the one who painted the world with love. Let us praise our God, the author of grace. Let, Let us, us worship, worship our God, God the, the composer, composer of joy. Spirit of joy, we dance in the knowledge that your presence dwells with us. We celebrate your name, your grace, your love in this space with our spiritual siblings. We proclaim our excitement that together we can glorify your name through sharing your love. May this minute be the start of a new chapter of our love for you and our love for our neighbors. God of awe and harmony, we were given the great commandment to love one another the way you, the Christ, the Spirit, loves us. And yet, the way we love becomes conditional. What events have distorted our view of divine love? How can we return to a simple but radical way of loving, transferring our hearts as we transform our hearts as we work to understand one another creating an earth which reflects God's heaven. Amen. The Spirit of God heals our hearts, blessing us with grace as the Divine One works to transform our world into a realm of peace and joy. Amen. This time, all Sunday school may take their leave and go on to Sunday school, and we will sing our opening hymn. Love thou art, this 
visit us with thy salvation and to every trembling heart. Breathe, O oh, breathe, thy loving spirit into every troubled breast. Let us all in thee Inherit, let us find thy promised rest. Take away the love of sinning, Alpha and Omega B, and of faith as its beginning. Set our hearts at liberty. Come, Almighty, to deliver. Let us all thy life receive. At a new return and never, never Our scripture reading is from Acts 16, verses 9 through 15. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside by the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira, and a dealer of pur in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. Word of God, word of, word of life. Thanks be to God. 
The next scripture reading is from Psalms 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let, Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the, Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge peoples with equity and guide all the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth its, its increase. God. But our own God has blessed us. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Sing that one more time. Halle, halle. Halle, halle, halle. gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus answered, those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hello, good people of the Pacifica Synod. You may be seated. By now, the Synod Assembly has elected my successor, the next bishop of the Pacifica Synod. That person is in my prayers, and I trust that God will give them all they need to be a great leader for the Synod in the years to come. I also want to thank you. Uh, it's been an honor to serve as your bishop for the last six years. And I want to thank you, not just for your support of me or of the Synod or of the ELCA as a whole, but I want to thank you for being you. Thank you for being the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America in your neighborhood and community. Thank you because of the way you share the gospel, because of the work you do and the love you share. More people in your neighborhood know of the God who loves all that God has made than would be possible if you weren't there. The work you do is vitally important, and for that, I give you my thanks. I know many of you are preparing for confirmation is in the springtime. It's coming up pretty soon for many, usually held on Pentecost Sunday. A number of you have your students write faith statements and present them at worship. That's what we did in churches that I served, and I really enjoyed working with the students, uh, helping them wrestle with some deep questions about who God is, listening to how they see God working in their lives, found that a very meaningful practice, especially when I contrasted it to what I had to do when I went through confirmation. I did not have to write a faith statement. What I went through was called public questioning, and here's how it worked. We got four, count them, four pages, single space, stapled back to back, of questions plus answers that we were to memorize, we could be asked any question by the pastor in front of a group of people from the church, and we had to answer the right answer. So my day came. I was up on the stage with my classmates, 
And out in the audience, there were about 50 people, council members in addition to our parents, in addition to anybody else who uh, was interested in coming with the pastor right next to the stage, ready to ask all the questions. And the pastor started, asked a question of the person spitting right next to me, and, they, and he asked him, what are the names of the first two human beings in the book of Genesis? Whew, I thought, Adam and Eve, what an easy question. He's going to go easy on us. I was so grateful. He came to me next, and he said to me, in the parable of the sower, what are the four types of soil and what did they represent? I was incensed at the injustice of it all. As an adult, I realized that for the young man sitting next to me, answering the Adam and Eve question was every bit as hard as my answering my question was for me. So that's helped me to live a little bit better with the injustice, but still, it didn't feel quite right. Another thing I had to do for my confirmation was pick my favorite Bible verse as my confirmation verse. And I said, no problem. I had a favorite Bible verse. It had been my favorite for years. It was Judges 5, 27. Let me recite it for you now. He sank, he fell. He lay still at her feet. At her feet he sank, he fell. Where he sank, there he fell. Dead. That was my favorite Bible verse. It was the second one I had memorized. Only after, for God so loved the world, from John 3, 16. But the powers that be, in this case my parents and the pastor, said no, I couldn't use that one. And so I had to punt. I ended up using the one my older sister had used at her confirmation, which was 1 Corinthians 13, 13, Faith, hope, love, abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. A fine verse in my top ten, but not really my favorite. And from that time on, I began kind of a search for what would be my favorite verse. And I found many candidates as the years went on, especially as I went in from college and into seminary and kept looking. For grace you have been saved through faith, And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. That one from Ephesians. Or since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are justified by God's grace as a gift. That one comes from Romans. Or another favorite. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand fast therefore and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. That one's from Galatians. I I love all of those. But none of them were quite um, my favorite. And then one time I was in my first call, I was leading a Bible study from the book of Galatians, and I discovered in Galatians 2 the following verse. It begins in the middle of verse 19 and goes through verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Um, that became my favorite verse. It explained to me why stories were so important and how any person's story could be a parable of how God is at work in the world. Because if God lives inside people like you and me, then God will just show up wherever we are. And when that happens, then God's work is done. I think this is what Jesus is talking about in our lesson that I read from you earlier today. It's his last night on earth. Later on this evening, he's going to be betrayed by Judas Iscariot. He is going to be arrested by a temple guard. He's going to be tried by the religious leaders, handed over to the Roman authorities, sentenced to death, and later nailed on a cross until he dies. And so he's preparing the disciples for his departure. He's told them he's leaving them and that where he's going, they cannot follow. He's told them, though, that he will not leave them orphaned. And he has promised them that God will reveal God's self to them and that he will be revealed to them. And one of his disciples in the verse just preceding what I read says, Lord, how are you going to be revealed to us? And Jesus says, the Father will reveal himself through the word. The words that I have said reveal myself to you. And the Father will reveal himself through those words. And the Father and I will make our home with you. And then he, later on he says, And I will send you the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, who will be with you and remind you of all the words that I have spoken to you. 
In other words, the Holy Spirit will come to us, and with the Holy Spirit, the Father and the Son will make God's home with us, so that wherever we are, we are not in that place alone. God goes with us everywhere we go. And that was important to be told to the disciples, because God knew, Jesus knew, that they were going to be discouraged in ministry, even after they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. They would speak to people who would not be open to what they had to say. They would try ministry tasks that didn't work out the way they had hoped they would. They would try to share the good news of Jesus, only to find their words seeming to echo against the ceiling of the building in which they spoke. Jesus knew they would be discouraged and knew they needed to be reminded that God would still be with them. Have you ever been discouraged in your ministry? Have you ever felt like your words didn't go far enough? Or the work you were doing just wasn't making enough of a difference? I know I have. It's happened to me a number of times in ministry. And I'm going to tell you about one of those times in particular. I was a very young pastor. I'd only been out of seminary a little more than a year. I was called to be a youth pastor. And yet the youth group was not going well at all. Usually most Sunday nights, we get at most six kids. Often it was as few as three Nothing I did seemed to make any difference to get them there, and I was just discouraged. I began to read the want ads. For those of you under 40, want ads were in the papers. They listed jobs, and people could get them. It's kind of like the way you'd use Indeed nowadays or another such application. But I discovered from those want ads that my theological education didn't make me qualified to do anything. Most of the want ads were for key punch operators. For those of you under 40, key punch operators, it's a little too hard to explain. You'll just have to Google it later on. But at any rate, I was discouraged. I didn't find a job. I wasn't sure what to do. And out of the blue, I received a card from one of the moms of two of the teenagers in my youth group that simply said, I am so thankful that you are my children's pastor. I was just thinking about you today and decided to send you this card because I wanted you to know how grateful I am that you are working with my children. Well, it's so random. I don't know I've ever gotten a card like that before or since, just out of the blue for nothing. And I don't think that I was giving off any kind of vibes that I was unhappy. I, I was trying not to do that at all. So it just seemed to me that it might be the Holy Spirit reaching out to me to say, I'm still there, keep going. But that didn't solve anything because my youth group, you know, I had about half a dozen to a dozen kids who are part of a clique from one particular high school. They really liked each other and they really weren't open to any of the rest of the kids and they didn't always come to youth group. Other kids would come, but they weren't always feeling welcome. So they weren't sure that they'd come back and then I'd convince them and then they wouldn't have such a great experience and I, I just couldn't pull the thing together. I didn't know what to do. And then, about a week later, I saw a flyer for a conference on small groups, building small groups in your church. We had been talking about that. I was supposed to do that work too. And so I went to this thinking that it would be all about adults. And when I got there, there was a workshop on small groups for youth. And I thought, well, I might as well attend this, see what it might have to say. And in there, I got a process that I decided to try with our youth. We were about to go to a big national youth gathering. There were 15 kids signed up. I separated them into three groups of five apiece, a couple of click kids in each group and a couple of non-click kids in each group, and with adults who worked with them, and, and there was just a process we went through. The third night we did that prior to going to the gathering, my group really opened up about hardships that were going on in their life they became vulnerable for each other they cared for each other and it was just so amazing I thought wow what a great leader I am until I got out of the group and discovered that every group had the same experience it had nothing to do with me but the Holy Spirit was showing up because you know Jesus knows that we get discouraged in this life and we don't always know if there's a God who loves or cares for us and that's why the Holy Spirit shows up. It's why Jesus showed up in the first place. God knew that we can go through these hardships in life. 
And as we go through hardships, we can doubt if there is a God. We can wonder if what we try to do to share God's love is making any kind of difference. We can even doubt if there is a God or if that God cares about us at all. And so God decided to act to show us how much God loves us. And God acted by becoming one of us. Jesus came to us earth and showed us that God is for us, not against us, by healing the sick, feeding the hungry, and preaching good news to the poor. But nowhere did Jesus show us how much God loves us than when he went to the cross for us. For on the cross, Jesus took on our sin, everything that would separate us from God, all that would keep us separate from one another, and put to death their power over us forever. And when Jesus rose from the dead, he rose to pour the Holy Spirit into us. And that Spirit reminds us that we never go through this life alone, that the Father and the Son have made their home with us, and God is always with us. So whatever happens to you, God is with you. And even when this life is over, God will still be with you to lead you to, into eternal life. And so you don't need to worry about yourself. You can lift your eyes from your own concerns and look out to your neighbor and see their need and be open to them and ask yourself, what can I do with my life to help their life be better so that they also rejoice in the God who made all things and made all things for good? The youth group wouldn't have had that vocabulary to give it. And even with these small groups meeting, there were still some divisions. I had two girls who came to me and said, we know you're putting together a rooming list. We want to tell you there's no way we will room with this other girl because um, we just don't like her and nothing's ever going to change that. Not your small groups, not anything. But then they, I said to them, well, I didn't say this, but then they decided to start to pray about it. I didn't ask them to do that, but they decided to pray about it. And on the plane ride, this was before um, uh, we had all the um, TSA regulations, but, but even so, they could have changed seats on the plane. On this plane, they changed seats so they could sit with her. And when we got to the place where the youth gathering was, the first thing they said to me was, we want you to change the rooming list because we like her and we want her to room with us and we want her to know better. It was weird, but it felt like the Holy Spirit was showing up. This was a group that really liked to have fun and liked to um, had fun with each other, but they also began to mingle more with other groups, and they said, we want to learn how they're doing youth group. We want to bring back some stuff to see if that will work for us. They had never said anything like that before. The Holy Spirit was showing up. There uh, weren't mandated servant projects, but this group tried to sign up for a servant project. They found them all filled before they get there, but it amazed me. This group had never wanted to do a servant project before in their life. But they said, well, God's given us so much and we're in this new city, we just thought maybe we could give something back. The Holy Spirit was showing up. And then on that final day, I had booked our flight home so early that we were going to miss the final worship service. And so we decided to have one on our own. I gathered all of us in my hotel room. We kind of sat there wherever we could find a space. We had bread and wine for communion. And at the passing of the peace, one of the young women from the clique, who was one of the more popular girls in her school, um, had bought a pin, a sunshine pin, for every person in the room. And at the passing of the peace, went to each person and said, this is how you reveal God to me this week. This is how you showed me God's love, God's giftedness, God's care. It was so meaningful that even my most stoic high school boy was crying. It was an amazing thing and so impactful that about 20 years later, I heard about it from one of the young people who is no longer so young, but who said to me, every now and then I have doubts in God, but one of the things I remember is how real God felt in that room. And I'm reminded that God shows up. Good people of the Pacific Synod, God shows up. As Jesus has said in this gospel lesson, the Father and the Son have made their home with you. The Holy Spirit is with you, reminding you of all the words that Jesus has said. And because the Spirit is with you, you have all you need to do the ministry that God needs you to do. Don't be discouraged, but also don't be afraid. Keep your eyes open. Try new things. If you fail, who cares? 
to everybody. When Jesus died on the cross, it looked like Jesus had failed. And we know that through that failure, God did God's most powerful work. What may look like failure to you may turn out to be God at work, bringing hope and help and faith and peace to people in need. So God bless you as you continue in your ministry. When you get discouraged, remember the Spirit is with you. And trust that that Spirit will help you to share God's love and the good news of God's grace and forgiveness as you do your work. And as you do so, I know God will bless you, fill you with faith, give you peace, and help you to stand for what's right in this world. It has been an honor to be your bishop. May God bless you as you continue to share the love of Jesus Christ with all you meet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in His holy word. He's never failed. stand for the Apostles Creed and we recite together I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ God's only Son our Lord who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of... 
forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we would be passing the peace. The peace of the light of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share that with each other. We have the tools we need to love one another. Through our talents, treasures, and time, we create God's love here on earth. Our contributions, no matter the size, craft a world which reflects God's love. This is my song, O oh God of all the nations, a song of peace for lands afar and mine. This is my home, the country where my heart is. my holy shrine, but other hearts in other lands are beating with hopes and dreams as true and high as mine. My country And home. 
you, Chris. That was awesome. I felt like I was sitting in the organ right over there. It was beautiful. The prayer of dedication. You may kneel or stand as you wish, uh, or sit as you wish uh, for the prayers. Loving God, we glorify you by sharing our gifts of love with this community. May these offerings today nourish a world craving more love, peace, justice, and hope. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Loving God, lead us to follow your spirit rather than our own prejudices or desires. As the church cares for one another, open us to perceive your gifts in those we least expect. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Inspire us to praise you through the beauty and majesty of the natural world around us. Urge us toward more deliberate care of the world you have made. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble the rulers of nations before your splendor. Direct them to the people who need their attention most and turn them from the temptation to hoard wealth or power. God, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Hasten to dwell among those who are in pain or distress especially the family of Doris Lindbergh, Geneva Presbyterian Church in Buffalo, and the community of Uvalde, Texas. As Christ enters our deepest suffering, remain with those experiencing despair and great need. God, in your mercy, hear our pr prayer. Place holy love at the center of all our relationships and communities. By your love, heal us, convict us, and renew us. Bring an end to racism in our churches and communities. Let everyone know your goodness by the love we show one another. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In the special list of intercessions we pray today, for Janine, Yvonne, Ning, Russ, Marge, Chuck, Marilyn, Clyde, Leslie, Cynthia, Ronald, Noel, Margaret. Give us a place in the diverse company of your beloved saints. Teach us the value of each person's identity and bless us with a shared identity as your children kindred of Christ, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, sorry about that. That's all right. Just a few announcements. Uh, first of all, we are so blessed to have our assisting ministers all the time. 
they come forward and fill in at whatever level they are needed. Thank you. Um, let me go down the list here. Um, first of all, back on the round table, uh, Carolyn Klein brought um, some COVID tests. Uh, they expire at the end of July. So if, a if you need just a few, they're in a box out there. Hopefully they will all be gone by the end of the, the church service because we want those to be used and not wasted. Next week we are starting our 930 worship service. Um, we will be worshiping with Korean and uh, English this next Sunday. And it's Pentecost Sunday and I'm hoping that each person will bring in their mind or on paper the Lord's Prayer in a language that they can speak it in. Hopefully we will get, I see German, I think we have French, we have Italian, we have Spanish, we have Norwegian, we have Chinese, we have several dialects from China, which is just glorious. So it, it will be read from where you are. Just have it in front of you though, if you don't know it by memory, um, in another language. And hopefully that will just I just, I love Pentecost Sunday for that reason. So bring the Lord's Prayer, even if it's not a language that you're used to, but if you can look up Norwegian or you can do something else, bring it, try for it, okay? Uh, afterwards, the Cornhole Tournament, that's right after the service next Sunday. Um, progressive Dinner, June 11. Graduation Sunday, June 12. Vacation Bible School, July 11 through 15. And Music Camp, did I say Music Camp? Yes, I did. Music camp, I like the sound of that. One more time, music camp starting August 1st through 5th. So if you have a young person or know of a young person that would enjoy that, it's a wonderful um, 10 o'clock to one o'clock for that one week. Just a great deal of joy. Any other announcements that I've missed? Then we move on to our benediction. As this new week begins, we dance as we celebrate God's presence. We sing as we proclaim Christ's love. We create as we embrace the Spirit's vision. We love boldly, care radically, and share courageously to glorify the Spirit of God in our midst. Amen. Our next song is an unusual one to end church with, but we remain seated except as the... Um, the uh, part of the service that you either were involved with yourself or if there's someone in your family that had was special from the army or from the navy or whatever it is and we sing along as we do our armed forces medley for our memorial day <laughs> dusty trail as those caissons go rolling along. In and out, hear them shout, counter-marching all about as those caissons go rolling along. For it's high, high knee in the field artillery. Count out your numbers loud and strong. Two, three, four. One, two, three. And where you go, you that those caissons go rolling along. Anchors away, my boy Navy. Anchors away, all. Oh. Farewell to college joy. We sail at break of day. Through our last night on shore. Hail to the home Until we meet once more Here's wishing you a happy voyage home Air Force Off we go into the wild blue yonder Down in eye of the sun There they come to meet our thunder, Adam boys, give him the gun. Down we dive, dotting the flame from under, off with one terrible roar. We live in fame, but down in flames, for nothing can stop the
the U.S. Air Force. Coast Guard. So here's the Coast Guard marching song we sing on land or sea. Who surf and storm and howling gale, I shall our purpose be. Semper Paratus is our guide, our fame of that was in the Marine Corps or has family. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we will fight our country's battles in the air on land and sea. We will fight for right and freedom and to keep And thank you all for serving. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Two, three, four.